So in today's video, I'm going to be walking through my process of making a comic from beginning to end just in Procreate. Now, usually I use multiple programs to do this sort of thing. Maybe I'll do the art in Procreate, but I'll do some of the lettering or I'll do the panels and something else. But for the sake of this exercise, I wanted to take it from beginning, the very, very beginning until the end and how I would just use Procreate if that was the only app I was going to use on the iPad to do something like this. Now, usually I start off with uh, with my sketchbook or I'll even start in a Google Doc and I'll start writing my script. And I like to capture a lot of that stuff before I start drawing because it just helps me organize it and it helps me understand what size canvas I'm going to need. And once I get my comic set up, it, it doesn't really matter what size it is for me. I like to go higher res. I like to draw uh, bigger than it's actually going to appear on the web. Um, but as far as size goes, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to resize it when I'm done. And then I'm going to start by sketching out my panel lines and figuring out where all my panels are going to go. Now I'm going to say that this is probably one of the clunkier things to do in Procreate, but it is totally possible. So I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing here. If I start drawing a line in Procreate and I stop and I keep my Apple pencil or my stylus or my finger on the canvas, it's going to snap into a straight line. And now I can use that straight line in order to draw um, the sketchings, the border panels that I'm going to use for this comic. Now, while I'm drawing that, if I place another finger on the screen, it's going to snap into, I believe, 15 degree increments. So I can draw a perfectly horizontal or vertical or angled line. And I'm just gonna do that over and over and over again here. Now, what's happening is uh, I am finding that in some places as I drew these lines, my panels are the wrong size. Like I want to, you know, resize them a little bit. So what I do is I take this selection tool, it's this little squiggly thing up here, and then I'm just gonna highlight the area that is kind of the intersection point of that panel. And once that's selected, then I tap the arrow tool. I can move anything on that layer now anywhere I want. So I'm gonna move it left or right um, and, and kind of make the panels look good, look the way I want them to. You'll also notice once I did uh, like two of the vertical lines to define the width of space between those panels, I wanted that to be consistent. So another thing I, I can do is I can select those using the selection tool. And there's a little icon down at the bottom of the screen. It's like one line on top of the other. If I tap that, it's going to duplicate what is in that selection. Not only is it going to duplicate it, but it's going to stick it on another layer. So I'm then going to highlight it again. I'm going to duplicate it, highlight it again, duplicate it. And I do it over and over and over again. That way I'm getting a nice I don't have to rethink the width or redraw and hope I get the width right, you know, on those panels when I'm when I'm trying to get the spacing between them just right. Now, before I ink up my panels, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough out some more pencil lines here and you're going to see me just going over and over and over again and, and adding these. What these are are guides for the text I'm gonna be adding. I'm going to be hand drawing all my lettering because Procreate doesn't have a lettering tool. Uh, so I get a nice hand drawn feel to all the text that I'm gonna add in here. But before I do that, uh, I want to um, get, the, get them all kind of on the same height. So I'm drawing these pencil lines on their own layer in order to do that. Now, once I get everything kind of in place, then I'm going to actually add the ink lines for this. And this is the same exact process, except I'm using a different pen. Um, my favorite pen that I use is called the Feud Pen, which I downloaded uh, from Procreate's forums. There's a link down in the description if you want to check that one out. It's one of my favorite pens to draw with. And here I'm just drawing lines and, and I'm being a little bit sloppy. They're overshooting because uh, this particular pen see, tends to taper at the edge and I don't want my comic panels to taper. I want them to be solid, so I overshoot a little bit. And then I can go in and I can go and erase all the overlapping places. Now this seems to go pretty quick in the video because of the speed drawing, but um, drawing these panels is actually fairly time consuming. It probably took me, you know, a half hour to get all this set up. Whereas if I was doing this in Photoshop on the desktop, or even if I was using some the program like uh, Medibang on the iPad, it has a comic panel creator tool just so much faster. Um, so oftentimes if I do this sort of thing, I might create it in Medibang and then copy it and then paste it into Procreate so I already have those panels. So if you have Medibang and it's a free program, you should definitely check it out if you have an iPad and you're doing this sort of thing. Um, there is a faster way to do this, but for the sake of this video, I, I wanted to kind of stay in Procreate to teach you guys. And once those inks are done, then I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is getting all the text in there. I like to block in the text first because I don't like drawing things and then finding out I'm completely out of space for, for my word balloons and having to cram in the words. 
I like having all my letters be the same height. I like my text being kind of consistent from panel to panel as far as size and that sort of thing. I, I think graphically it just looks cleaner that way. And so I always do that first. And so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, and again, hand lettering is also time consuming. Uh, it's It's got a nice touch to it. I don't do it very often. I, I'd prefer to just type it out. That's the, the most important thing to me, but I, I do like how it kind of looks at the end. Now, once I'm happy with how all my lettering has come out, at least my pencil lettering, I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, and as you probably noticed, I put everything on its own layer and this is gonna be my pencil roughs. Uh, I'm just using the pencil tool from Procreate that came with it and I'm just sketching out um, what the characters look like, uh, where they where they sit in the panel and that sort of thing. And this is funny because this is the fun part, right? This is the part where you actually get to draw, but there's a lot of work that actually happens to get to this point. I had to write the script, I had to kind of set up the panels, I had to get a sense of where the text was going to sit, and, and all that uh, creates the constraints that the rest of this artwork is sitting in. And then once I'm done with that, then I go on to the next step, which is inking. And of course for that, I'm going to create its own layer, uh, and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to outline, and I really like drawing with kind of this feud pen again, because it's got this really great thick to thin feel, it's got a good range to it. Uh, so I can set it, and the harder I press, the thicker the line's going to get, and the lighter I press, the thinner it's going to get. It's also got a really nice taper at the end. I like pens, ink pens, that taper at the end. Uh, that's always something that I look for when I'm trying to pick out the brush that I'm going to use. Because it's fun to draw like a really thick outline to a tree and then draw, you know, just a really light, you know, line inside it. I like to get a lot of variety in these lines and, and the thick to thin, and then I can uh, go in and add some of the darker spots to this, you know, um, you're going to see me coloring in the kid's hair and, and that sort of thing and this, this solid black. So you have these large black areas in there, but you also have like these really thin lines and you have thick lines and it helps define the foreground and the background and, and where you should be focusing in on each panel. All that fun layout stuff. So for here, I'm not going to do full color. I'm just going to do a black and white comic. I like, I've been enjoying drawing in grayscale lately. I don't know why, uh, but it's kind of fun. Now in my Procreate 10 tips video, uh, which I'll link up in the description, I showed you a quick way to uh, fill in the blanks when you're coloring this kind of artwork. And I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hand color this thing like some kind of peasant. And, the, and there's several reasons why I might want to do this. For, the reason I'm doing it today is I want my colors on their own layer. Um, when you color in your black line work, what you're doing is you're you're kind of destroying your ability to go back and, and change the ink lines later. Um, if I do fill in the color with the drag and drop method, uh, what I end up doing is I, I duplicate that ink layer before I do that. But here I want to get some nice ink washes. Uh, I, I usually start with the background and get a feel for it. It's kind of nighttime outside. Um, so, so I want to kind of get that level of gray established first, and then I can key off the colors of the character based on those background colors. Now watch, you're also gonna notice that I'm being really sloppy with this. I'm using a big brush, I'm doing it quickly. Um, I'm going outside of the panel borders. I'm, I'm coloring in things I shouldn't be coloring in and that's totally fine. This wash goes on quick, but once it's on there, I'm gonna go through with the eraser and, and clean up everything. Make sure the word balloons are nice, crisp white. Make sure the color doesn't leak outside of the panels. Make sure, I actually uh, carve out the characters from this as well. And in fact, in this case uh, of this piece, I don't always do this, but I'm actually creating yet another layer uh, for my characters and that sort of thing for their color. So if their color overshoots the, shoots the boundary, I can erase it without erasing that background color. And so that's my next step is just figuring out, you know, what color these kids should be um, and figuring out what color the trees should be and, and just kind of setting up that whole grayscale aspect to this. For example, I want the witch to be have a dark pot and I want it to have a, a dark hat and dark clothing so the witch kind of stands out as a dark character. Whereas the hippo crab character, I want to kind of stand out a little bit so that that character is going to be a little bit lighter color than the background behind it. And then lastly, I'm creating yet another layer and I'm going in here and I'm adding my highlights and shadows. 
I don't go too overboard in this particular one about the highlights and shadows, but I, I, I do kind of go in there. Uh, I add a little bit of glow around like the top of the character's hair or like the edge of the witch's hat or the edge of the witch's cauldron. I just like it. It adds a little bit of depth. I'm actually using um, white color on its own layer um, to just kind of paint over. It's not 100% opaque. I don't know what it said. It's probably like around 30 or 40%. Just enough to kind of create an edge around some of these things. Give it a little bit of depth, but not too much. So there we go. This is all colored in now, and I'm liking how it's looking. And so from here on out, I can export it as a PNG or a Photoshop file, and I have to resize it back on the desktop to the size that I actually want to use. Um, but... Pretty much from start to finish, this was all done in Procreate. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it gives some kind of insight into uh, how I like to do this stuff, how I like to work, and how I've been using Procreate. Like I said, I often uh, import the panels from something and import the text or do the text at the very end. But it was kind of fun to go through Procreate and actually do this, you know, from scratch. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments or over on Twitter. And if you enjoy my videos and find them helpful, uh, please consider contributing on my new Patreon page. And I'll see you in a week or two.